Hey guys, it's Chris with After 5 Outdoors, and today I woke up and it was negative 10 outside. So, we're going to take our outdoor activities inside. We're going to go ahead and put a YouTube concept to the test as we build a backstop for indoor archery shooting. So, why don't you come on with us in the lawn shed, and we'll see if we can get it done. So, I apologize today because we're in a lawn shed, there's going to be a bit of an echo. But we'll do our best to keep our audio where you can hear what we're saying. So we did a quick search on YouTube for archery backstops and came up with several different designs and chose one involving these stall mats. They tend to be half an inch to three quarters, maybe an inch thick, very, very heavy rubber. I also used some two by lumber I had sitting around for, for framing. I happened to use two by six, a little more stout than two by four. I don't really think it's necessary for this sort of design. I'm also going to be having kids shoot inside with this backstop and a lot of the designs had an open void towards the bottom. So I added a second mat with a little bit of a, an apron so that we don't get arrows skipping underneath the backstop to whatever's behind. And to make it easy to pull out away from the wall, we added some casters. I really would like to emphasize, this is not a target, this is a backstop. It's a safety in case you miss. I have a feeling that it's gonna be pretty harsh on the arrows and I wouldn't want to shoot them through it consistently because you will do damage over time. So first shot, we're going to go for the gold 10 yards, shooting a 496 grain arrow. And I'm praying I don't put a hole through the wall of my lawn shed. Look at that, we got a full stop. Wow, that's tight. That's really tight. Let's see what it did to the other side. I can smell burned rubber where the friction from the stall mat stopped the arrow. It looks like we've got about seven inches, eight inches of penetration, but a full stop. No debris with it. I'm gonna have to take this practice broadhead it's a rage practice broadhead off this arrow but man you can smell that rubber burning but at 10 yards i don't foresee myself shooting any closer than that indoors and even if you came up within five yards which we should do that in a second i don't think you're going to get too much more penetration so you're talking something like this would work very well inside a garage two-car garage if you want to shoot for consistency um, this is awesome. This is a game changer for indoor shooting. All right, now Cody wants to highlight to the world how weak I am. This is tight. This is super tight. It's a lot of force to pull that out. And the arrow is relatively undamaged, but I can feel streaks of rubber and, and scuffing on the outside of the arrow. This isn't something I would use as a target at all. I've got to reemphasize this. This is not a target. This is a backstop. It could damage your arrows. And I think possibly if you're shooting some lighter um, carbon, these are uh, Easton FMJs. They've got that outside aluminum shaft. Um, I also think that possibly if you're shooting something with a more flexible spine, these are 300. So I think if you went more flexible, you could run the risk of damaging your arrows. So I would not suggest using this as a target. But for a backstop, this is money right here. Shot number two. That's going to be a dead Chowini deer. So in our second shot, we shot at 10 yards. I've got a second arrow here that weighs within a grain of that arrow. And we're gonna shoot half distance and compare the amount of penetration that we get. Five yards should be more than sufficient for any two car garage, I would think. So let's give this a shot. Dead Chowini deer. 
five yards. So as I'm walking up, what I'm seeing is less than half an inch distance between our 10 yard arrow, which is here up top, the green one, and our five yard arrow, which is the red one below it. It's amazing to see that at five yards, it's half inch di a half inch difference in penetration. You can still smell that burning rubber. There's a lot of friction that's being generated. And I've got to reemphasize, this is a backstop. We're testing the concept, but it's working very, very well. I'd be very comfortable using this inside of a garage at close quarters, just for just getting that uh, form down and maybe some precision shooting at close range to keep your skills sharp for in the, the actual hunting season. Great off season practice, make things really safe. I'm impressed, very impressed. So once again, these are Rage Field Points, 120 grain. They come with the Rage Kit, that little practice point they give you. I honestly think these will give you, these would give you more penetration than a regular field head. They're very thin, low profile. So they're punching through this pretty well. I think if you had a regular field point, you'd get even more stopping power out of this rubber mat. But needless to say, I'm impressed. Well, these are going to be the last two shots into the backstop today, but I've got to say I'm really impressed overall with this design. Uh, just as a review, I'm shooting a 495, 496 grain arrow, uh, complete build with a 120 grain uh, Rage Practice broadhead in front. And I'm also shooting a Hoyt RX3 with a 70 pound draw weight and a 28 inch draw length. And at five yards, we're still getting maximum stopping power. So if there are any other archery concepts you'd like to see us test from here on YouTube, let us know. We'll see if we can make them happen. Stick with us in the future as we go down the rabbit hole in this archery series, building high forward of center arrows. I've got a kit coming in from Grizzly Stick that we're gonna be playing with. I'm really excited about that. And if you like this archery series, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. So as always, we hope you can get out and enjoy God's great outdoors and we'll see you on the next one.